Hello viewer, in previous lecture we have discussed about the Kapalavati Kriya. Kapalavati is also a cleansing, Hatha Yoga cleansing Kriya in which we repeatedly contract and expand our abdomen with synchronization of breath. This Kapalavati Kriya help to practice the Agnishara Kriya. Here, we are discussing about the Agnishar Kriya. Agnishar, first we focus the literal meaning of Agnishar Kriya. Before discussing the detail about Agnishar Kriya, we focus our lecture plan today. First, we discuss the Agnishar Kriya, its meaning. Next, preparatory practice. Then techniques, duration, sequences and awareness during Agnishar Kriya. Next precautions and contraindication and benefits of Agnishar Kriya. At first we discuss the meaning of Agnishar Kriya in Hatha Yogic text. So, Agnishar Kriya is described in Antar Dhoti in Gheran Sanghita. Antar Dhoti means Antar means inner and dhoti means cleansing practice. So, the cleansing practice in internal parts of our body is known as antar dhoti. There are different types of antar dhoti described in our Hatha Yogic text, but here we discuss only the Agnishar Kriya. It is a Hatha Yogic cleansing process related to abdominal muscle and digestive system especially. It gives good massage to abdominal viscera. Abdominal viscera means here our whole intestine, especially small intestine and stomach and it helps for Noli practice. Later we discuss about the Noli because Noli is also a part of cleansing, Hatha Yoga cleansing practice. Here the Agni means Jatharagni. Jatharagni means the digestive fire or Sara means essence. So, in Ayurvedic text or in Ayurveda, Jatharagni is in stomach as its secretion which is responsible for the digestion. So, Agnishar Kriya activating the digestive fire or cleansing or with the essence of fire. So, Agni, they, in Ayurvedic text uh, describe the lot of or different types of uh, Agni, but here we only focus the Jatharagni. Jatharagni means the, the fire, the, the essence of fire which is responsible for the digestion. In other words, we can say that the, we compare that the Jatharagni means the digestive juices, digestive enzyme which is uh, responsible for the digestion. Now, in Gheran Sangita chapter 1st 19th sloka described that they push the navel against the spine a hundred times having thus got rid of abdominal diseases when increase the gastric fire. Here Gheran Sangita describe or discuss the especially the benefits of Agnishar Kriya. Agnishar Kriya eradicates the all abdominal disease and increase the gastric fire. So, those practitioner which practice Agnishar Kriya, the free of all abdominal disease and their digestive system or digestive system work properly. Now, discuss about the preparatory practice because uh, before go to the final practice, uh, uh, we should go to the preparatory practice. In, in preparatory practice, first sit in Vajrasana and separate the knees as far as possible, keeping the big toes in contact with each other, then place the hand on the knees and close the eyes. Then relax the whole body for few minutes, especially the abdomen. In this photograph, we can see very clearly side view and back view of practitioner. This photograph showed the Vajrasana, sitting in Vajrasana practice. Here is the frontal view, here is the side view and this is the back view. Then straighten the arms and lean forward slightly. Keep the head erect, open the mouth 
void and extend the tongue outside. Then breathe in panting manner like a dog through the mouth with the tongue extended. In this photograph, we can see very clearly the practitioner seat in Vajrasana and uh, they make Jalandar band. First, they exhale completely and make the Jalandar band and uh, tongue should be uh, out extended and uh, repeat repeatedly contract and expand their abdominal muscle and uh, move the abdomen freely. Now, contract and expand the abdomen rapidly or synchronizing the movement with the breath. While breathing out, the abdomen should contract in contract inward and while breathing out, abdomen should expand. So, the breathing should be passive. Passive means not active way in relaxed manner. So, it should be resemble the panting of a dog. Now, we go to the main technique of Agnishara Kriya. The practice in empty stomach either in Vajrasana, Padmasana and any sitting comfortable sitting position. You can see here this photograph showed the standing position, the practitioner in standing position. position. Here we discuss the standing position. In a standing position, keep the leg slightly apart, hands on the front of the thigh and then bend forward slightly and breathe out and hold it outside. Try to abdomen goes towards the spine like Uddiyana Band. Later we discuss about the Uddiyana Band. Actually Uddiyana Band is also a technique of Hatha Yogi Kriya, but here we discuss only the Agnishar Kriya. So, keeping the abdomen muscle tight, move the umbilicus or navel region forward and backward rhythmically according to our capacity. Then raise up and release the abdomen and breathe in. Have few abnormal breathing. Repeat this practice 3 to 4 round comfortably. Now we discuss the main practice or main Agnishara Kriya. Here first we can see it in Vajrasana and Padmasana. Because Padmasana and Vajrasana give our body in in firm condition in, in the ground. So, always uh, we can sit in Vajrasana and Padmasana. Hand on the knees and close the eyes because when we open the eyes our awareness outside. So, in each yogic exercise we should close our eye because our awareness inward. Breathe in deeply because when we breathe deeply then our whole lungs expand completely and after breathing deeply exhale completely and emptying the whole lung or complete lung as much as possible. So, this practice uh, is able to retain uh, the breath outside for few seconds. Then lean forward slightly and straight the elbows. Push down on the knees with the hand and perform Jalandar Band. Jalandar Band actually Jalandar Band is also a hot yogic technique especially it is a neuromuscular lock. Band means lock. So, here in Jalandar Band we lock the our chin in our jugular notch or our throat pit. Contract and expand the abdominal muscle rapidly for as long as it is possible to hold the breath outside comfortably. Do not strain release Jalandar Band easily and comfortably. Then take a slow deep breath in and this is one round. Relax until the breathing normalize before commencing the next round because when we practice continuously we can feel tiredness. So, beginners may find this practice difficult and quickly become tired due to lack of voluntary control over the abdominal muscle. Three rounds of 10 abdominal contraction and expansion is sufficient for first or beginners. With regular practice up to 100 abdominal movements may be performed with each round and 
the time and breath retention should be gradually increased over a period of time. Our ab actually our abdominal muscle not control voluntarily. So, when we practice gradually we can hold the breath outside gradually and our body stamina is also increases. Here we discuss the awareness during the Agnishara practice because here we focus the awareness. Awareness is very important thing during any yogic practices because yoga not only focus the physical practice also yoga focus the mental engagement. So, during any yogic practices we should aware we should aware about board our about our body and our mind also. So, here physically on uh, synchronization the breath rhythmically with abdominal movement means when we breathe in and out our abdominal muscle automatically move inward and outward. So, uh, here we focus the um, focus the synchronization of breath in abdominal movement. For a spiritual aspirant or spiritual purpose especially awareness on Manipura chakra. We discuss detail about the different chakras in our body. Actually there is no existence of chakra in our physical body, but yoga and yogic literature also describe the different body. There are three types of body we can we have like physical body, subtle body and causal body. So, this chakra existence of this chakra are especially in our subtle body. So, there are seven chakras in our subtle body. The first and primary chakra is also known as the Muladhar chakra. Muladhar means the basement or base. So, the adject position of Muladhar chakra in between the anus and genital organ just in the point of pubic muscle. Next chakra is Swadhisthana chakra. Swadhisthana chakra is adject position of Swadhisthana chakra is the root of our spine or, or spinal cord. The next chakra is Manipur chakra. We can see here the, the adject position or adject site of Manipur chakra is just behind the navel region. In Manipur chakra, in yogic text discuss about Manipur chakra, the, when Manipur chakra awaken, the sadhakas or yogic practitioner can digest every food material, their, their digestive fire improved and they can digest each and every types of food material. After Manipur chakra, the another chakra is the Anahata chakra. Anahata chakra is also a very important for yogic sadhaka. The adject position of Anahata chakra is just behind our heart or cardiac position. When, cardi when Anahata chakra awaken, the practitioner and the yogis can perceive the subtle sound or they, they awaken their emotions, they expand their emotions. So, next chakra is the Vishuddhi chakra. Vishuddhi means the purified. When Vishuddhi chakra awaken, the sadhakas get purified their sound, they can listen the subtle sound, they can contact the another people very in very subtle manner. And the last and most important chakra is the Sahasrara chakra. You can see in the top of the head, Sahasrara chakra. So, Sahasrara chakra means the thousand petal chakra. When we awaken our Sahasrara chakra, then sadhakas goes to enlightened. This is the main and final achievement of the yogic practices. We go to the sequences during Agnishara Kriya. So, after practicing the asana and pranayama, Agnishara Kriya should be practiced on an empty stomach. Because when we practice asana and pranayama, our abdominal muscle and chest muscle 
loosen and uh, the the circulation of blood also reach in that muscle so when muscle active then easy to perform the agni shara kriya so preferably in the early morning before breakfast and ideally after the boil should be or have been emptied don't practice the agni shara kriya when our boil is not emptied in summer month or summer season this practice should be performed with care as it may raises the body heat and blood pressure especially here we can take a, a special precautions after practice this agni shara kriya our body heat slightly raises and our metabolic rate slightly raises during this period it should always be followed by a cooling pranayam like sitkari and sheetli these pranayams are specially discussed in our hatha yogic text like gheram samhita and hatha pradipika in sitkari pranayam we can inhale through the gap of our teeth and exhale through the nostril this is known as sitkari pranayam in sitkari is a sanskrit word sheet means the coldness or coolness so this pranayam effect the cooling effect in our body and in sheetli pranayam first we fold our tongue and inhale through this fold tongue completely and exhale through the nostril this is known as sheetkari pranayam so both sheetkari and sheetli pranayam give the cooling effect in our body initially practice in standing position then go to the sitting position because standing position is comfortable for beginners always practice in empty stomach don't perform beyond capacity because when we go beyond your capacity you can tired you can you you get tired very easily or there should not be any pressure in other parts of the body we focus only the abdominal muscle we discuss the contra indication during the practice of agni shara so especially the people suffering from hypertension heart disease acute duodenal and peptic ulcer over active thyroid gland chronic diarrhea should not be practice this agni shara kriya because agni shara kriya raises our body heat so in hypertension when our metabolic rate raises there is chance of raises our blood pressure in heart disease also we can aware during this practice in acute duodenal and peptic ulcer actually peptic and peptic ulcer in in our stomach and duodenal ulcer is the ulcer of duodenum so uh, when we practice agni shara kriya our stomach and intestine move rapidly so there is chance of bleeding so uh, we can aware during this practice the people suffering from hyper acidity enlargement of spleen and hernia should practice under proper guidance not practice by self so should not be practice during menstrual cycle and pregnancy in female because in menstrual period when we contract and expand or move repeatedly our abdomen there is chance of over bleeding so always avoid during menstrual period and pregnancy however it may be practice in the post natal period to tighten up the abdominal and pelvic muscle because in pregnancy our abdominal muscle our abdominal and pelvic muscle loses so after childbirth uh, the people can practice under uh, under guidance so this practice may uh, promote or improve our abdominal muscle tone and to recondition the reproductive organ now we discuss the benefits of agni shara kriya the first chapter 
sloka number 20 described that this vahnisar dhoti or agnishar kriya brings success in yoga to the aspirants. This should be kept as a sacred and should never be dissolved. So, in Hatha Yogic text, text especially the Agnishar Kriya is also known as the Vahnishar Dhoti. So, here use the term Vahnishar Dhoti. The positive and negative pressure are produced in the abdominal viscera, which contributes better blood circulation and removal of waste product effectively in this region. Here, during practice of Agnishar, when we contract our abdominal muscle and expand our abdominal muscle, the negative pressure create repeatedly in the abdominal viscera. This negative repeatedly negative and positive pressure improve the blood circulation to the different visceral organs. It gives good massage to internal organs like pancreas, adrenal gland, kidneys and intestine and also stimulates the associated nerves and improves their efficiency. So, Agnishara also affect our endocrinal secretion like, en like adrenal gland secretions, pancreatic secretions like insulin, glucagon and adrenal glands also have two parts there is adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla. Adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla produce different types of hormone. Especially adrenal medulla hormone is known as catecholamines. They are also known as the known as the epinephrine and norepinephrine. So, this hormone play a important role during the stress period. It increases the gastric fire thus activating the functions of the body. It prevents maladies like constipation, in indigestion, hypoacidity, flatulence and sluggishness of liver and kidney. So, we can say that the Agnishara Kriya improve the kidney function, liver function and our digestive function. It can also alleviate depression, dullness and lethargy. Agnishara not only affect the physical body, also affect the our mental, mental or psychological problem like depression and dullness. So, from above discussion we can conclude that this Agnishara Kriya, this Hatha Yogic Kriya is an excellent practice to strengthen and develop control over the abdominal muscles and the diaphragm and increasing optimal health for abdominal organ. Thank you.